Finally, Ovirt supports change block tracking API. My name is Marcin Kubacki, I'm Chief Software Architect, and in this presentation, I'm going to show you what is the developer's perspective of the new APIs and how we implemented it in vProtect. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you a few words first about the vProtect itself, so what it is, so the general context of uh, where we are going to actually um, in where, where it was implemented in, uh, in our solution. Few strategies that we already support to back up um, VMs in the OVIRT environments. Then a little bit deep dive into CBT API and the actual demo. So let's start with a brief vProtect overview. So it is agentless, it's VM level data protection solution. It supports incremental with change block tracking API, but not only with this one and now also support synthetic uh, storage. So, so synthetic backups are also possible. Uh, it is also, actually it provides a, quite a long list of features. It's uh, among of these that you can find file level restore capabilities, snapshot management for your old virt ma virtual machines, uh, multiple backup providers, and the list is growing. As you can see here, it's not only about the possible uh, file system based storage providers, uh, backup providers or object storage that you can use, but also enterprise grade backup providers that you maybe have already in your infrastructure. And obviously on the left, there is a quite long list of, of, of platforms. Some of them are Ovirt based as well. Uh, there is also a generic mechanism uh, which allows you to use your custom backup workflows and implement them as well in the vProtect um, console. We also added storage providers in general, so maybe not used directly with the with the Ovirt platforms, but you can protect your Ceph RBD or file system based um, shares as well directly via this console. Behind the scenes, actually, there are two main components, vProtect server and vProtect node. Nodes will actually move your data. They will export and use CBT API to fetch blocks from your Ovirt environment. And they don't have to be installed uh, on in, inside, this, inside your Ovirt infrastructure. They can reside outside. Uh, notice that uh, Ovirt-based environments, actually the family has grown a bit. It's not only Red Hat virtualization as well, but also Oracle Linux VM uh, is also based on the Ovirt platform. So um, all of them can be protected in, in, in the same way. Oracle Linux may be quite a, a little bit behind because of the release cycle. Now, inside the node, notice that there is a virtualization or cloud platform integration part. This is the place where we actually implement low level communication with the APIs and we would like to fetch only the blocks with the CBT that are needed. Later, obviously, data is put on the staging space, so the, the, the workflow in general stays the same and later forwarded to appropriate backup destination. Now, whenever we talk about the backup strategies, we actually support a few of them. So this is a brief history how we started actually. So we started with the version three API with export storage domain. And then from the developer's perspective, you are just only need to invoke the export process on the snapshot that you have created. So you need to create a snapshot. Unfortunately, you also need to create a clone of the VM, which takes additional time. And then later you could clone, so actually export this clone uh, to the actual uh, staging space, your staging space that you're, you're going to use and grab the data uh, and put it somewhere uh, where you would like to store it. Uh, tons of limitations, especially this, this exclusion support, that was one of the problem, A single export storage domain could be mounted. Uh, per data center. Then we thought that maybe, okay, disk attachment, that was actually also described at that time on the obvious side, so which is cool. Uh, the general problem with disk attachment is that it's quite complex if you think about it. You need to create uh, a snapshot, then later these snapshots need to be attached to your virtual machine. You need to detect that these, v that these disks are available, then copy data and no CBT at this point. So it doesn't really, um, it, it, it couldn't actually help us at this point. Now, uh, the, the good thing is that actually with the CBT API, you could use it as well because uh, this is just the um, API that allows you to fetch blocks, but not only. So then if, 
I remember it was version 4.2, uh, this commit transfer API happened and all of the transfers initially went actually through the hypervisor manager. Cool thing is that setup was simpler. You didn't have to install uh, your data mover inside the Ovirt environment. You could transfer it directly from the manager. So the setup actually was like providing URL, username and password, and that's it. So snapshotting and uh, transferring data, including incremental deltas, that was cool, was um, actually supported directly from this API. Uh, problem? Obviously, uh, initially the problem was actually the um, hypervisor manager. So the manager was the bottleneck of such solutions. So it, it didn't scale well. Uh, deltas, okay, they also consist, they, they um, actually allow you to export increments, but it's not only delta that, um, it's not only the data that has changed, actually. There are these increments grow in some chunks. So like the one gigabyte or two gigabytes are pre-allocated. So you may expect that these increments actually will be bigger. Now to bypass the problem with the, um, the manager at that time when, when the manager was still a bottleneck because it has eventually been solved, especially for the CBT API, uh, we developed the SSH transfer solution, especially that you could invoke the netcat as well behind the scenes. And this works uh, perfectly fine uh, and scales, scales great. So you export deltas as well. So incremental is supported. You export data directly from the hosts, so not the manager. And uh, using Netcat, actually, it, it also allows you to boost the transfer. Uh, perfect. But still, you probably don't, you may not want to, to use the SSH and uh, allow direct access to your hypervisors at that point. So finally, we have uh, implemented as well the CBT. At that time, it was technical preview. It has recently been marked as GA, so now actually we can talk about it a little bit more. Uh, now, the CBT API exposes not only the change blocks that has been actually Mm, no, changed since your last backup because you will have actually the artifact called backup in your API now. It wasn't back then uh, available. Uh, but the, the biggest change is that you don't have to keep snapshots on your hypervisor. So now, uh, even if we, if we create, uh, if we expect future incrementals to be created, you will not see growing list of snapshots which you later need to 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 handle, uh, and that's pretty messy in this in this case. Now, with the CBT, uh, well, let's 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 we, we have a short list, let's say, of a few things that we need to 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 consider in here. So, um, it allows to change uh, to, to query for the for the changed blocks but also it allows to fetch these uh, changes from the host so the uh, the actual uh, disk image transfer api uh, has been changed so it allows us to grab data directly from the host without the need to access it over ssh now uh, i have already mentioned that snapshots ha don't have to be kept on the on the virtualization platform anymore cool one. Uh, and behind the scenes, uh, well, Ovirt um, actually uses KVM with QMU uh, to, to keep track of what has changed using dirty block maps. So that's actually a uh, Libvirs feature behind the scenes that's doing this, this uh, the, the dirty job, let's say. Um, now, the snapshots, uh, snapshots can occupy a significant amount of space. Uh, and that is that was actually one of the and actually affect performance. So so CBT also this is is going to solve your problems re related to this one. Um, now whenever we create a backup, we need to record this check, check uh, checkpoint ID. So similar to the CBT, like it is in VMware, for instance. And later we use this ID to um, fetch information what has changed since last uh, last backup that we that we have. It also includes zeroed blocks. So we will have information that some of the parts of your disk image has been zeroed out. It's an empty space. You no longer need to, to keep it. Um, Still, the base is the disk image transfer API. That that that's. Uh, but uh, between the releases, we need to we needed to update it. So currently, the supported minimum version is version 4.3. 4.3 um, 
still doesn't uh, well for for that for obviously introduces the GAs uh, CBT as a GA but for that free also affected the um, base disk image transfer API strategy that I have already mentioned so the request has changed slightly um, now in general in general this um, transfer from the image IO service um, that runs on the hypervisor should roughly uh, correspond to the transfer that you have in the SSH transfer it really depends on in, a spe in on the specific circumstances um, in technically it is going to transfer the uh, just the change blocks uh, but uh, on the other hand it is going to use the um, HTTP as the backend so it may not perform that that uh, that that fast but still um, definitely it's easier to, to be set up and it should be it should be relatively relatively comparable uh, now in the past there was also uh, um, some problem with these uh, shut uh, VMs that are uh, not powered on so we needed to fall back to the regular disk image transfer API so that was temporarily um, compared to SSH transfer method which we uh, had, until now we considered as the standard way to to protect virtual machines um, these can that this should be quite comparable in terms of performance but CBT is going to be uh, the way to go with all of the new deployments so you should expect actually um, that CBT is going to, um, to to be the standard way to protect your overt environments in the future especially that snapshots are not needed on the on the hypervisor uh, Netcat can perform very very fast with the SSA transfer but as I mentioned HTTP um, um, HTTP can be slower it is supposed because it's going to transfer some metadata as well uh, um, HTTP HTTP protocol basically is going to, to be to perform slower than than the rough transfer of Netcat but Netcat is going to transfer more data so it's it's going to transfer also the empty blocks which may not be needed now the overall process with the CBT so first we ex create export task uh, that's it. we are going to um, work only with QCOW2 files that's very important now the very important aspect from the CBT is that we need to prepare backup in general over uh, over the SDK so especially create a, an enable CBT uh, inside and, and uh, uh, create a backup artifact depending if it's a full or incremental we check for change blocks and then uh, if it's incremental we also grab the check uh, checkpoint id to to refer just to these blocks then we create backup file for every disk and grab the data over the sdk including the zero ranges as well and if it's incremental we also are going to record the information about the blocks that have been changed so the list that allows us later to merge the blocks uh, properly and validate if we have um, grabbed the blocks that are within the ranges if if, uh, if um, for some reason they they are reported wrongly now we are going to be uh, to, to read from the http in both cases finally we uh, use we use um, method to finalize the image transfer because we need to create an image transfer uh, re um, entry inside the overt that allows us to refer to this transfer and we update our checkpoint ID so we need to record it for future if it's um, if it's um, needed for future backups as well now the restore we obviously um, just have either have the the merged backup in our case in the past it wasn't synthetic so we had to merge them but with the new synthetic backup provider you are able to just grab the complete backup and push it through the API we also need to convert it uh, to the QCOW2 format import it and later um, attach the disks upload it via HTTP still you don't have to be inside um, you, you, you don't need to be installed as the proxy in, in this case so you need to create a, a disk and upload the contents of it and finally again finalize the trans image transfer um, over the SDK that allows you to um, that allows you to initiate the actual 
um, com complete the data transfer. Now, this is the example you can use SDKs for different platforms. We use for, for the Java, but the uh, cool thing is that you have the APIs accessible and the SDKs for different languages. This is the example how you could um, send specific command to the um, to initiate, let's say, the snapshot. Key thing about the image transfer API is that it needs backup artifact. This backup is not the one that we use internally. This is the backup artifact from the object API, and it needs to be passed through the um, through the SDK as the argument whenever you initiate the image transfer that it, re it relates actually to specific um, to specific backup. Few blockers on the road. Initially, we had some issues with the, the documentation, so we had to reverse engineer the Python examples that we that we had, uh, missing ticket UUID, uh, so so some issues with the creating the backup object in the previous example, uh, was was actually the solution. Then the parent checkpoint ID did not match the actual leaf checkpoint during the backup. That's quite a long message, but in general, at some point, Ovirt update helps. So some of the problems were solved pretty much by the Ovirt update. Uh, then we faced the issue with downloading everything uh, instead of just change blocks. So that was the problem on our end. We had problems with the range header in the request. Finally, the problem with the um, power down VMs, which was later solved in Ovirt version 4.4.5. Um, and VMs going down after backups. That was also, uh, seems to be solved at least in the, in, the, uh, um, in the current releases. So now let's go to the demo. So I have here my Ovirt environment and a uh, few virtual machines running, okay? Notice that I have one that is specifically using QCO2 files, and I here have my vprotex. So I have three major sections, virtual environments, applications, and storage. We are going to focus inside the infrastructure here, where we first obviously add manager. The inside this manager, notice that I have changed the um, method to change block tracking. So now whenever I have my instance and initiate backup, one of them is here. This one is the Alpine QQ2 I mentioned. I can initiate incremental backup and this schedules a task inside it, puts it in the queue. So the export currently, this one is going to be incremental. This is going to use the information inside. So notice here that currently I don't have any snapshots. We are using the uh, the APIs, so we will use the change block tracking uh, ID to fetch the blocks only that are necessary. Notice that because this one is actually quite small, the incrementals may be a little bit bigger. So it's not only the data has been changed, it may also require you to store the uh, sometimes the empty spaces as well, so, to, so we can merge appropriately these empty spaces inside, or sometimes there is some uh, internally additional blocks that have been changed, even though inside the virtual machine nothing actually specific has occurred. So here is my backup history. One is currently in progress. Inside the backup statistics, notice that I have one smaller backup. This one is incremental. Transfer rate, this really depends, okay? So it seems that it is slow, but notice that behind the scenes, we need to create certain specific number of extra actions behind the scenes. And um, grabbing the, just the change blocks may not, um, uh, it's not always about the fetching the actual change blocks, but it also requires some additional operations inside the object. So it is, it may take longer also to scan sometimes for the, to, to retrieve specific blocks randomly from your virtual machine. So the export process actually has been initiated. Still, I don't have any snapshot here. So in the meantime, let's go and have a, a short overview what is, what is in there. So, so the in general, backup allows us not only to create a, well, backup and restore the VMs, but also to to share or uh, share or uh, share such uh, such drives over iSCSI. So here is the basic restore to the hypervisor manager. You can select where to import, but notice that that in the 
mount window you are able to not only mount them automatically so it is going to give you the feeling that the virtual machines is actually well it's not running but it's mounted within the single with the single file um, file system single root file system approach so you can browse through the uh, through the files and download them if necessary because during the restore we either have the synthetic backup or we have merged version uh, merge or we, we have to merge the the uh, chain of full incremental backups accordingly and present it to you as a single mounted locally on the node vm you can also share drives over SCSI. so i could um, share this complete block uh, complete block device to some external system this is very helpful as well uh, when you have the um when you have uh, be because we have change block tracking feature we can have the row complete uh, complete view of the row disk and apply only the changes that has been made Recovery plans also work uh, the same as the, it, it works for regular uh, for regular restores. Instead, you can also create actually the policy that allows you to re, re, um, restore multiple VMs according to your schedule or manually if needed. So notice that I have here a rule that applies to some set of virtual machines and I would like to initiate restores periodically or on demand. Okay, so that's pretty much concludes the general uh, general demo. Thank you for watching, and uh, you can find us on the on the LinkedIn and other social media. Stay tuned.